everybody. I want to talk to you a little bit about the building and the, the remodel process that we're starting. Last week I talked about the vision for the building. So if you weren't here, I do encourage you to look at the drawings that are in the lobby room. So they're all up for you to see. But today I want to talk about the process, how we'll get the remodel done. So I have some very good news for you. And uh, this is the first time I'm, I'm publicly saying this. Uh, we anticipated having to go through a conditional use process and conditional use permit process, but we just found out we don't need to do that. So praise the Lord, that just shaved three months off of our waiting process to get started. We still need to apply for the building permit and the change of occupancy uh, because we're, we're changing a couple of rooms from storage to actually gathering spaces. Uh, but we're just so happy that, that's gonna, <laughs> that, that uh, we're gonna get there a lot sooner than we thought. So that's very good. We're hoping to have all our permits and drawings and stuff in hand so that we could start construction this November 1st. And I know it seems like a long way off, but it's gonna get here before you know it. And if we can start then, then we should be totally done with the remodel and, and everything uh, all ready for use by June of 2022. So it's a little ways off, but we'll be having a great time worshiping together and it'll be here before you know it, I, I believe that. We are considering moving into our new proper, property sooner than we had planned. And so we're still kind of working on the details for those for that. So I'll keep you posted as we get that figured out, but it's pretty exciting. <laughs> Uh, I, our, we have a Christian architect and a Christian contractor, and I'm really excited about that because both of these companies mainly focus on, on building churches. So they are experts and they are brothers in the Lord. So that's really awesome. I'm, I'm looking forward to working with them. The contractor is responsible for all the big things. So uh, he'll, all the big projects that get us going, but also he will oversee the quality control for any volunteer projects or labor uh, donations, anything like that, that we contribute. He'll just make sure that it all fits together and it's all a really good quality. So the contractor will take care of the new roof, the addition, adding the carport into the worship center and, and updating the whole exterior. The contractor will put in the new staircase that leads to the upper room for our youth auditorium and also be adding a new restroom towards the back of the property for the nursery. We can save money by donating labor or donating materials, things like that. And we'll talk about that a little bit further uh, as we go along. And we'll actually do a survey at some point and just get all that stuff on paper. And then we can also save money by doing the weekly Friday afternoon or Saturday morning cleanup, getting ready for Sunday morning. So the, the contractor doesn't have to pay people to get that done. So we're looking forward to that. But we know for sure our responsibility, we're NFC is responsible for the costs and labor for everything related to the kids wing. So converting the garage into the new kids church uh, um, auditorium and uh, the other things that go with that. And we're responsible for the labor and materials for the upper room, the youth room, also for the offices, any updates we want to do on the main restrooms, and uh, way down the road, our future large kitchen. So those things uh, are not in phase one, and those uh, we're responsible for. And, you know, since it's kind of this joint uh, effort between the church and the contractor, I already got a head start on the demolition. I don't know if you heard about this, but... I I was driving a moving truck recently and it was the end of the day. I was pretty tired. I'm a pretty careful person when it comes to that, but I was not careful enough on this day. I pulled under the carport and sheared off a sprinkler head in the carport. First, this rush of air came, then a rush of water, and we had to get a repairman in. It was awesome, but I guess, you know, I'm, I'm just getting started a little ahead of time on that. So we're really excited about our property and we're excited that we're moving forward. We're actually making progress now. So awesome. I, I, I wanna just ask you to just keep praying for the process. Uh, things like, I know that I, I, there have been people praying that the process would go quicker. And I believe that it's the answer to your prayer that we don't have to do that CUP, that conditional use permit. And we save time. So let's just keep praying it in. I know that God's got good things in store for us. Okay, well, let's dive over into the message. Uh, would you take out your Bibles and uh, right where you are and turn to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. 
And we're going to continue in our, our, our message series uh, in just a moment. I want to tell you a little story. An avalanche raced down a steep hill heading right for the town of Aberfan in Wales in the United Kingdom. It wiped out several houses and it wiped out an elementary school while it was in session, taking the lives of 144 people. Queen Elizabeth was reigning at the time, the year was 1966, and her advisors around her were encouraging the queen to go and visit this grief-stricken community. And she, she said, whatever for? And the advisor said, well, just to offer comfort. And she said, well, queens traditionally visit hospitals. We don't visit accident sites. And she, she just could not understand how she could make any difference and why she should go. So you know what happened next? I'm going to come back to that a little bit later. Let's head back to, our, our, to the Bible and to the series we're on. We're talking about the Sermon on the Mount, a collection of Jesus' teachings, probably over several days where he was teaching the crowds and teaching his disciples about what it means to be a kingdom of heaven person, a person that God favors and that God blesses. And we started with the Beatitudes, which is this, this list of statements where Jesus was describing God's favor on people in, in some surprising ways. And he said things like, God blesses or favors the person who is poor and knows your need for God. God blesses you and he comes toward you. And he talked about how God blesses with comfort those who mourn. And God blesses the merciful, the pure in heart, those who work for peace, those who endure persecution for doing right. God blesses all those people. And he was saying the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, is made up of people just like that. People that are going through easy or difficult situations in life, but they're seeking God and trying to follow him. God blesses those kind of people. So that's the Beatitudes. And then there's this short section of uh, the Sermon, Sermon on the Mount that we're, we're in right now. It's a section where Jesus talks about godly influence, making a difference in your world. And really, influence is just simply impacting another person's character, thinking, or behavior. In Matthew 5.13, Jesus goes on with the Sermon on the Mount and he says this, you, somebody say me, <laughs> you are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. So Jesus makes this sort of strange and pretty bold statement to his followers. That's you and me. You are the salt of the earth. When Jesus said the earth, he wasn't talking about dirt. He was talking about all the people on the earth collectively. You, my followers, are the salt of all the people, all of humanity. It was like Jesus was saying, hey, kingdom people, you salt humanity. In other words, your life impacts others. Kingdom of heaven people are people of influence. So there's these two images, and today we're going to just talk about salt. Next week, my plan is to talk about the next one, which is light. Salt and light are images of impact. They are substances that change their environment. When you think about salt, it has so many different uses. Medically, salt is used for healing wounds. It is used to soothe the sore muscles, like we take an Epsom salt bath. Uh, salt helps to heal your sore throat. Like I, I know uh, not everyone around me believes this, but when I start to get a scratchy throat, I head down to the sink, I get some water, uh, warm water in a glass and gargle with salt water and it takes it away. It like prevents it from settling in on there. So uh, I, I'm, I believe, I'm a believer. <laughs> Salt also has some uses in the laundry, and you know, and nowadays you may not realize this, but salt can remove stains. It can take dye out of fabric. It can make your whites their whitest whites. <laughs> when it comes to food, of course, salt preserves meat from spoiling. And back in Jesus' day, they did not have electricity, they didn't have refrigerators, so they would coat their meat in salt in order to try to make it last longer and keep, prevent it from rotting or spoiling. Salt has antiseptic, 
qualities. So it can actually help prevent disease. It's pretty amazing. And of course, the obvious one, when you season with salt, it makes your food taste better. But salt also makes people thirsty. And we know that a little salt goes a long way. It's, it's not really something you just eat a spoonful full of salt. That is so gross. But a little bit of salt does its job and it makes people thirsty. It goes a long way to season. So salty Christians are those who share Jesus uh, with your life-giving words and with your lifestyle of witness. You are salt of humanity when you share Jesus with your words and with your good deeds. I want to turn over to Colossians chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. And this is what Paul wrote. Live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive. The NLT says attractive. The original uh, root words were seasoned with salt. Isn't that cool? Let your conversation be gracious and seasoned with salt. May it make people thirsty so that you will have the right response for everyone. I think that's the, the coolest verse. So you are called to make a positive impact on humanity. You're called to be an influencer. Now, not just in the sense of social justice, and that is very important and very good, but actually as an agent of salvation, of redemption, bringing Jesus' salvation to the world, and especially to the people in your world. Now, one little caveat here, we're not automatically the salt of the earth. Jesus is talking to a very specific group of people. So just showing up at church doesn't guarantee that you're being the salt of the earth. Uh, just volunteering at a homeless shelter does not guarantee that you're the salt of the earth. And sometimes that's kind of misused in, in society at, at large. Yeah, we're just being the salt of the earth. But those things are awesome things to do. And you might do those because of a calling from Jesus. But in the context of the Sermon on the Mount, you can see that Jesus is calling a certain group of people the salt of the earth. So, uh, first of all, if you're a follower of Jesus. Uh, but second of all, if you live out the heart of the Beatitudes, if you're confessing your need for God, if you're walking in humility, peace-loving, working for peace, uh, being merciful, uh, working for justice, all those things, those are the kind of people in the kingdom of heaven that Jesus is talking about. And then in the coming weeks, we're going to actually look at the law of Christ as he spelled it out in the Sermon on the Mount. Those are the people that Jesus is talking about that are the salt of the earth. They're the people that are making an impact in the world for the kingdom of God. You do those things, you'll be a kingdom influencer. You will make an impact like salt makes an impact on anything it touches. But Jesus issued kind of a strange warning in the second half of that verse I read, Matthew 5.13 in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, you are the salt of the earth, but that's just a short part of the verse. Then he goes on and said, but what good is salt if it has lost its, its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. So when you're thinking about Jesus said, you are salt, there's a danger that you and I, our lives could be worthless for the kingdom of God. Wow, that, that's intense. Uh, if we had been gathering in person today, I actually had a little gift for you. Uh, so I'll have to give it to you next week. Uh, but we teamed up with Saltworks, a, a distributor and manufacturer of salt in Woodenville, and they graciously gave us a bunch of gourmet salt samples to give out to every one of you uh, in, in the congregation. So I'm excited for that. So next week, make sure you're here next week and pick up your gourmet salt sample. There are going to be some salt flavors you've never heard of. <laughs> um, uh, so it was so generous and gracious of them. It probably didn't hurt that our son Jared works at SaltWorks. So he might have been able to, you know, have some influence there. But uh, he, I asked Jared to help me connect with one of their, their experts on salt. And so I, taught, I spoke with, on the phone, their quality assurance manager at SaltWorks. And one of the questions I asked him was, does salt ever expire? Is it possible that salt would ever lose its flavor? And it was interesting. The answer is no. 
he said, salt, pure salt, does not expire. So I, I interpret that to, to, to mean that salt is meant for eternity. Salt is meant to be eternal. And the example that he cited was pink Himalayan sea salt that many of us are familiar with. That salt is thousands of years old and it hasn't expired. It's still salty. It's still effective. And I, I asked him about the expiration stamp on the, on the salt packages. And on their pure salt, they stamp it uh, as if after they package it, that, uh, that it would have an expiration date 10 years down the road. And he said, the only reason we do that is because our customers insist that we have an expiration date. It doesn't expire. Uh, but I, it made me wonder, so what was Jesus referring to when he said, if salt has lost its flavor? Well, in that conversation with the QA manager, uh, he said, now when you mix salt with something else, like right here, I just happen to have black truffle sea salt. So it's salt, pure salt, but it's mixed with dried black truffle. And he said when uh, on all their fusion spices like that, they have to stamp it three year expiration. And that's because it's not the salt that expires, it's what you mix with it that expires. So when salt has something added to it, it's not pure salt anymore. Salt's impact shrinks when it's polluted or diluted. Salt's impact shrinks when it's polluted or diluted. So spiritually speaking, your impact shrinks when you're polluted or diluted. Think about that. When, when things come into your life like selfishness, or if you're staying silent about your faith in Jesus Christ, when you have an opportunity instead to share Jesus, you lose your influence and your impact on the world. When the, the gospel writer, the biography of Jesus writer, Mark, wrote down these words about Jesus, he, he, the way he wrote it down was this, salt is good for seasoning, but if it loses its flavor, how do you make it salty again? You must have the qualities of salt among yourselves and live in peace with each other. So I want to ask you, is your life full of love for God and love for others? Well, that's pure, unpolluted salt. Do your priorities for your time, talent, and treasures align with God's priorities for your life? That's pure salt. Do you build bridges to people around you who think differently than you do? You're being salt. Do you share Jesus through life-giving words and through your lifestyle witness of, of doing good deeds and doing good for others? You're being salt. You're being the salt of the earth, just like Jesus said. So staying faithful keeps you potent. Staying faithful makes you potent as salt, as salt of the earth. When you bring healing to hurting people because you love God and love others, you're being salt. When you remove stains, remember how I said salt is good for laundry? If you, when you remove stains by introducing people to the soul-cleansing blood of Jesus Christ, you're being the salt of the earth. When your life is compelling, not repelling, you're being salt. And the good news is when you're being salt to the people in your life, you are flavoring the world with Jesus. What a beautiful thing. What a cool thing. I want to come back to my story a little bit earlier about Queen Elizabeth. She took a lot of flack in the press for not going and visiting that community of Aberfan after they had that, uh, that landslide down and, and that buried their school. But she didn't think that her presence would make any difference. Like, what, why, why should she go? What, what good would that do? But eight days after the avalanche, she had a change of heart and she went and visited the town. She actually entered the homes of some of the people who had lost kids uh, in that school. She talked to people in the streets and her very presence was comforting. It made an impact just because she went to where they were and listened and cared and loved. Uh, later, Queen Elizabeth said, 
that the greatest regret of her entire reign, and she has reigned a long time in England, her greatest regret is that she did not go visit those people immediately after the disaster. Wow. One mom who had lost a son that was in that school that got buried in the rubble uh, said, said this later, the queen rose above politics and the din of noise. And there, was a, there were a lot of political issues related to that landslide. It could have been prevented. But this mom went on to say, the queen proved to us and that the world was with us and that the world cared. When you are individually the salt of the earth, you have greater influence being salt than being silent. A lot of times we're, we're too worried or too scared to speak up, but your influence, your impact as the salt of the earth, it, it comes from sharing and, and just being present uh, more than just being silent. So when you heal or share or preserve, when you cleanse or you witness, you show the world that Jesus cares. You have a greater influence being salt than being silent. When Jesus said, you are the salt of the, of the earth. Now, I hope this is not a spoiler alert for anybody. Jesus did not speak English. <laughs> So originally, he's, the, the word says he spoke them in a language that he spoke. There was a difference between the word for you, singular, and you, plural. And when Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, his you was plural. So it's like Jesus was saying, you all, my followers, kingdom people, you all are the salt of the earth. The you was plural. And I believe that as I think about our church, God is positioning us collectively as a church to be the salt of the earth, right here in the heart of Auburn and in the Southeast Beach of Sound region. Together, we will love and we will bring healing to hurting people. We will introduce people to the soul cleansing power in, of the blood of Jesus Christ. And we will live in such an attractive way as to make people thirsty for Jesus, just like salt. Because we are people who choose to compel by love, not repel other people. So I'd like to just make right where we are our prayer time. So would, would you mind just bowing your heads right with me where you are? Uh, just see if you can get those kids a little quieter. Hey, put down that sandwich, everybody. And let's pray. Let's take a minute and pray. Would you bow your heads with me? And let, let's pray. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for saying to us that we are the salt of the earth. And Lord, we want to be salt. We want to be salt for you. We want to make an impact. We want to make a difference for you. And Lord, I know that is our heart. So Lord, I pray that you would work in us and help us not to be silent when we can be salt. Lord, I pray that you would help us to make a bigger difference in our family, in our work, in our neighborhood, in our school than we ever thought possible because we're following you working through us. So with your head still bowed, I, I, I want to just give you an opportunity for a specific response. I want to pray for you if you are aware that your witness has been polluted or your fervor has been diluted. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know where you're at, but maybe the Holy Spirit's speaking to you right now and he's, he's letting you know that the world has impacted you more than you as salt have impacted your world. And if so, man, it's time to just get realigned and get refreshed and just regain your fervor and your passion for God. So if that's describing you, everyone's, everyone's heads are bowed, would you just raise a hand to God? I know I can't see you right now through this camera, but God can see you right now, right where you are watching this. Would you just raise your hand to God? All right. Is, is God calling you to, to just step up? Uh, maybe, maybe there's nothing really that comes to your mind about repenting, but would you like to be more potent salt, having a bigger influence, a bigger impact, healing, sharing, caring, cleansing, preserving good, and holding back the tide of evil in the world? If that's you, would you raise your hand to God? I know God sees you. And my hand is up because I sure... I want to be the most potent salt possible. Let's pray. Lord, I pray for the people who are just having this sense that they're, they're polluted by the world. 
They've taken on the world's values, the world's priorities. And Lord, in these moments, we're just realigning and, and we're getting squared up with you again. Lord, I pray for that person. Lord, I pray you forgive them of any sin that they've allowed in their lives. But also, Lord, that you would give them uh, just the, uh, the, the, the knowledge of your word to, to line back up with you and be a kingdom person, to be a person of mercy, working for peace and all those things. Lord, I also pray for, the, for all of us that we would be more potent as salt, that, that we would really make a difference in every little or big environment where you have placed us. And I thank you for placing us there. Help us to be your salt in those places, Lord. And one, one final prayer. I just want to invite you, if you have never done this before or if it's time to come back to Jesus, I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus, to actually become his apprentice to study his life and follow him and walk in his footsteps, continuing on his work in the earth as salt. But it begins by putting your faith in Jesus. So how do you do that? Well, and why should you do that? Well, because we're all born in sin and your and my sin separates us from God. So the first step is to turn from your sin, turn away from those things that harm yourself or others, turn away from those things that separate you from God, and so turn from sin, turn your life over to God. Say, God, I give you myself, my heart, my mind, my soul, my everything, my life. I give you all of me and then let him lead. If you want to do that today, would you pray with me? And uh, heads are bowed. Why don't you just raise your hand to God and say, God, that's me today. I'm, I'm putting my faith in you today. I want to pray for you. So would you just pray a prayer after me? Let's, let's pray. So you say after me, dear Jesus, you said, I invite you into my life. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you. So lead me, starting now and going on forward from there. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I am so glad that we're together today. I'm so glad that we've prayed these prayers. I'm so glad that many of you are going to see your potency as salt shoot through the roof in this coming week. And I'm so glad for those of you who just prayed the prayer to invite Jesus into your life. If you did that, if you just prayed that prayer, would you text the word restart, restart to the phone number 97,000? And that will just let me know that you made that decision today to put your faith in Jesus and begin to follow him as a Christian. Thanks for being here together, everybody. And hang on for just one more minute for a couple of closing words. Well, wasn't that a great message? Just a reminder of how God has placed us in the lives of people to be an influence. And you know, what I have found is when we've heard a message like this, God's gonna give you opportunities. So this week, pay attention to how God is going to be put people in your life to be an influence. Now, next Sunday, we have salt packets to hand out to give you to remind you also. So be sure and join us. Uh, if you are uh, new with us and joining us for the first time or haven't connected with us yet, I want to invite you again to text the word GREET to 97000, the phone number 97000, text the word GREET. And we would just like to welcome you and tell you how much we just love to have you be a part of joining us for worship today. Again, um, we also have, for the kids, after service, our online kids church. So be sure and check that out on our YouTube channel. And speaking of our YouTube channel, um, I want to invite you also, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, go ahead and do that. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel and that lets other people know who we are and kind of bumps up their recognition of seeing us online. So next Sunday... We would love to see you at 1030 at our new property at 702 Auburn Way North. We would love to see you. It is our last Sunday of Vision Sundays, and it is going to be so exciting. It'll be followed by our annual business meeting. So we plan to see you there. Have a great week. God bless.